today uh, we will do um, an interesting topic um, which will be the hypothesis testing and one sample t-test. So we are doing hypothesis testing and one sample t-test. Okay, so let's start tackling what a hypothesis testing means. Um, so the hypothesis testing simply says that you're testing a, um, a, an expectation out of a test. Okay, so for example, um, let's take about your, the first laboratory that you're doing now, right? You're testing, um, for example, whether the uh, acceleration in x direction is larger than acceleration in y direction. Um, so to do that, um, we just have to set up something called H0, okay, in other words, a null hypothesis. Okay, and then the null hypothesis basically states that um, whatever that you're testing for, um, it's not changed or not a different, okay, for example, if you are testing whether the temperature of today is different than yesterday's, right, H0 is going to say by default that the temperatures are not different from yesterday, okay? So that's basically um, your uh, default not changing uh, hypothesis. Only then, uh, using a t-test, okay, we are testing whether the null hypothesis is true or not, and if the null hypothesis is um, not true, then we will accept the H1, which is the alternative hypothesis, okay, which is basically opposite of H1 and also what you're testing for. Um, in statistical tests, we always test for H0, okay, and if we can reject H0, then we will H accept H1 as um, as an alternative hypothesis okay let's do some examples of that okay if if you say if the speed of car a okay uh, is larger than speed of car b okay so that's what you're testing for okay then your h0 is going to have to state that the speed is not larger right therefore um, your uh, null hypothesis will be va will be either smaller or equal to VB, okay? And in that case, your alternative hypothesis becomes uh, basically what you're testing for, right? Um, which is this. Say, if a speed of a car A is a different than car B, right? So if you're testing for, um, if VA is um, equal or, or not equal to VB, okay? then our H0 is going to say exactly opposite of that. That's basically going to say VA is equal to VB, okay? And then our alternate hypothesis is basically what we are testing. VA is not equal to VB, just like that, okay? So if, for, for example, if I were to um, test something like if average grade in ME310 is larger than 90, okay? So let's say average grade is G bar, okay? Uh, my H0 says that um, average grade, right, is not larger or equal to 90, right? And my H1 is then by default is going to become uh, zero is larger than 90, okay? So basically that's really it. So you basically test a hypothesis. Um, you set whatever that you wanna test and then the H0 becomes the negative or basically uh, the null hypothesis, right? And then the other one becomes the, um, the alternate hypothesis. And if you can reject H1, I'm sorry, if you can reject H0, then uh, what happens is that you have to accept the alternate hypothesis, uh, which is H1. Okay, so to test the hypothesis, uh, we can use three type of um, testing, okay? Um, one is one sample t-test. Okay, we will use it in this class. Okay, 
The second thing we can do is two sample t tests. T test. That will be the next class, okay? We're going to do that. And then we can also do analysis of variance or ANOVA. Okay, and that will be the uh, next, next class. Okay, so what we are going to focus our, our attention today is one sample t-test. But essentially, okay, so to, to do that hypothesis testing, right, um, let's say you have a normal uh, distribution, okay, and um, we will say that this this normal population, right, if you're testing, is centered around H0, okay, which is our null hypothesis, okay. Um, and you can simply set a confidence level here. Let's say if we do 95 percentile, right, um, um, or 99 or, you know, 99.9 um, .9 percentile, okay, um, then if you do measurements, right, and if you can say that the measurements fall uh, within this population that represent the uh, centered there on H0, right, let's say that the um, uh, H0 is uh, true, okay, and then basically we will accept it, and if your measurements fall within these areas, right, that you'll say that this is um, H0 is false, and we'll reject. So, if you remember um, that the, uh, the level by which we set our confidence level, right, um, it depends on the t value that we have selected, okay, um, and, and we can change that threshold value, okay. Uh, for most of the time, um, you use a, a normal population, okay, uh, centered around 95 percentile. In other words, most of the time you use 95 percentile, and that means that uh, p is smaller than 0, 0, 0.05. So that what this says is that the, there's a 5 percent chance. Um, so what basically means that, let's say, um, you did your test and your samples fall within this area, right, which is outside of the 95 percentile of your H0, right, so that means that um, there is a 5 percent chance of randomly observing this effect, right? Why 5 percent? because we are doing a 95 percentile confidence interval. If you do the 99 percent confidence interval, we will have said that there was a 1 percent chance of random, randomly observing this measurement, um, and so on and so forth. Um, so to determine uh, by uh, how to determine this is basically using a t-test, okay? And a t-test simply does this. We set a t-critical score okay, based on our measurement, and then we compare it against something called a t-score, okay, and then if uh, t-critical, right, is smaller or equal than to t-score, okay, we will accept h0, and if the t-critical is smaller than t-score, okay, uh, we'll reject okay so the t critical is pretty easy to uh, figure out so the t critical is basically uh, the same t score that we use uh, for our, our random uncertain measurements right so basically it is the t um, degrees of freedom in p okay um, so that's basically uh, n minus 1, and that's going to be uh, the confidence. Okay. Um, and um, that's basically is t critical. Okay. And the uh, t score 
is basically given by this measurement. So it's the um, x bar, okay, minus the uh, hypothesized value, nu, divided by s x bar, okay. And uh, we just don't use it negative or positive. We just use it as um, you know a positive value. Okay. So um, let's do an example um, and compare a calculator T score, calculator T critical, and then see uh, make a um, sort of measurement out of that. Okay. So um, so let's say the example says we are measuring the uh, miles per gallon rating of a car okay for normal mpg of um, some normally distributed cars right is different than 45 miles per gallon so I would like to get this word highlighted, a different, okay? So basically, here's the data. Um, it says that the, our data is, let's say, um, 40, um, 44, 46, 41, 43, 44, and 43, okay? So these were seven different cars. And with the degrees of freedom of six, okay. And if I were to do my math, right, my mean measurement was uh, 43, okay, and my SX bar was uh, plus minus, okay, um, 0 0.89, uh, okay. And then the question was this stood at 95 percentile. Um, so that's the adjusted value, the 95 percentile, okay. Um, okay, I'm sorry, that was not adjusted for 95, but that's it. Okay, so then um, let's set our H0. Okay, H0 said um, that the, the MPG is uh, different than 45, right? So then the... Uh, if that's the question, our H0 says that x bar is equal to 45 miles per gallon, okay? And then the alternate hypothesis is going to have to say that the x bar is not equal to 45 miles per gallon. Okay, so with this information, um, let's go ahead and um, uh, do our um, the um, test. Um, so I need to get two things, uh, T critical value, okay, um, this is pretty simple, I know that my degrees of freedom and I know my confidence interval, that's 95, right, um, in that case my T, uh, degrees of freedom was um, uh, 6, right, that's 6, let's write it again, that's 6, 95, okay, that's your table, 4.4, I'm going to post this table again uh, with the lecture notes today. Um, that's going to be 2.25. So that's the value that we're trying to beat. Our T-score, okay, on the other hand, okay, uh, is X bar minus the hypothesized value divided by SX bar. Okay, so our... Um, mean was 43 our hypothesized value that we're trying to go for is 45 correct and sx bar was 0 0.89 oh i'm sorry um, i made a mistake here um, so this t critical was actually um, uh, 2.447 and this value comes out to be um, uh, 2.25. There you go. Okay, so then the answer then is going to be uh, T score, right, is smaller than T critical. Okay, so that means that we'll retain 
h is 0, that means that x bar is equal to 45. So what happened here is that even though um, our um, mean value was 43, okay, as seen here, um, using the t-test, we cannot reliably say that if that value was different than 45, okay? So that basically, based on the statistical test, oops, uh, based on the statistical test, we were able to say that the um, this um, car MPG that we have measured of these seven cars is not different than 45, okay? So there is a little bit of silver lining here. What if we ask if um, we said MPG was smaller than 45? Okay, what then? Okay, um, last time we said different, this time we said smaller, okay? Um, so um, I would like to uh, put your attention back to this uh, normal distributed uh, population graph, right? Here's H0, uh, here's our um, sort of bounds, right? So that's our 95th um, um, percentile, right? Um, so if we are looking whether H0 is different than, uh, uh, sorry, whether our measurements are different than H0, then we basically are looking onto this entire area, uh, right? And that's mean that is a two-tailed t-test, okay? But if we are asking whether H, whether the measurements is larger or smaller than H0, okay, uh, either one of those, right, it basically says that the, uh, in this case, X bar bigger than H0, in this case, X bar smaller than H0, and in two-tailed te test, uh, X bar is um, equal to, or, um, you know, H0, um, not equal to H0, so that's what we are testing. Um, so in that case, um, in both of these cases, either smaller or larger, is called a one-tailed t-test. Okay, and if you look at the table at the end of your notes, you'll uh, find that the t-test uh, is basically um, has a different t-value uh, depending on whether it's a one-tail or two-tail. Okay, so let's say if you're testing um, that the um, uh, H0, uh, so that the um, MPG is smaller than 45 miles per gallon, our H0 says that X bar now is larger or equal to 45 MPG. And our H1 will become X bar is smaller than 45 MPGs, okay? So um, our T critical, okay, is going to become T695 one-tailed, okay? So that's a different column in the... Um, different column in the table, okay? I will just show that to you after I'm done here. Uh, one tailed. Okay, and that becomes 1.943, okay? Our T-score is not changed. T-score is basically still uh, 2.25, okay? In that case, uh, T-score Will is bigger than um, T critical, okay, and that means that we will reject H zero. That means that we can reliably say that the this MPG was larger than, okay, um, larger than, uh, uh, sorry, uh, smaller than forty five. So we cannot say if it's different than forty five but we can say if it's smaller than 45, okay? Um, obviously, the common practice is that the, um, you won't change your hypothesis before after you test, right? 
Uh, but if you look back the t-score value uh, more carefully, okay, so that's x bar minus uh, new divided by sx bar. And if you open the sx bar expression, this is sx divided by square root of n. And basically, um, larger the n, n, okay, um, larger the t-score. Okay, so for example, instead of uh, measuring seven cars, if we had done measured maybe 15, 20 cars, we would have maybe able to say uh, more reliably whether that be our average was different than 45. But with seven cars, we were not able to say if it's different, but uh, our statistical power good enough to say that it was actually smaller, right? So that gives you some um, idea of uh, what we can or we cannot do. Okay. So I'm going to bring back here. So this is the, uh, the, the lecture notes that I'm going to post. And you can see that the, um, in the t-table, you have one tail column and a two tail column. And then they are different values. So you will have to select your t-values based on if it's one tail or two tail uh, based on this uh, information. Okay, so that concludes our uh, lecture for today. Next week, we are going to do two tail t-test. Thank you.